they boost up their ego and they boost up the illusion of the I thought that look at me, look at me. Again, I've been there. I've done that. Okay. I'm not very proud of it, but I have done it. That I acquired power and you use it and you abuse it in the beginning like a kid that's been given this brand new toy and can do wonders with it so you mess around with it and if you're lucky and the grace comes after you eventually you realize that you're hurting yourself and you're hurting other people and actually that power becomes a hindrance it's keeping you from liberation So, basically, you enter these circles of sort, of sort of, I would call, maybe purification cycles, and you go through different ones, maybe all of them, maybe only one of them, and eventually, you are purified, and when I say purified, it's, this is just a way of communicating, okay? Uh... You're worthy enough. You have cleaned up enough for the grace to now start to reveal itself to you. And maybe you're lucky and you have the right teacher appear or you are getting very strong inner messages and your inner teacher is working with you. Whatever, other teacher, inner teacher, it doesn't matter. They're all the same and don't get hung up on that one either. Uh, the main point is that you come to clarity and the fog starts to disappear and you see the trophy. You recognize where the trophy is and you get focused on that. It means that liberation becomes your focal point and you start to kind of reject all these other stuff and not pay attention to it. That my guru is better, or my teaching is better, or look at me, I got so much power and I can heal this and that. You kind of ignore these things and you're really focused on one thing, which is the path of love, the path of self-realization. And if you're on the right path, then that goal, that path is reflecting back. It's pushing you to look within yourself and to bring the light inwards. And of course, then you're going to encounter another series of uh, challenges. Because now, maybe for the first time on your spiritual path you are now forced to look at your dark side and look at your shadows and that's sort of coming towards the end of the road that to look at your own shit which Nobody really wants to look at their own shit because why would I look at my own shit when I can look at yours and blame you? Why should I look at my dark, dark intentions or dark side? Especially if you were born or you grow up in the West that we like to blame other people or sue other people and we never like to look at ourselves. So... So now you're coming to the toughest part of this journey. Looking at yourself. And look, looking with this big flashlight every corner of your own darkness. And that part, those parts get exposed. And it's very frightening, very scary. And most people, they want to escape. 
But you have to go through it. You have to climb your own wall and walk into your own fears and dark sides. And quite often you need someone, you need your guru, you need your teacher to walk you through that because it's, it's a tough, frightening process and we need encouragement. Uh, and existence provides that for you. Her Majesty works it out for you and help is there. There's always help there, one way or the other. You're not alone. You can't do this on your own. It's impossible. Yeah. You, the grace has to intervene and pull you in. Even though it looks like you're doing it, but you're not doing it. So. Now, any questions, any comments? I had a question which I asked you before this is. Um, I'm very unhappy to hear that my thoughts are an enemy to me. Right. And I would <clears throat> like my thoughts maybe sleep for some hours or that I say them when I, <clears throat> I more often I, I um, check out that my thoughts are in automatic process and uh, I can ask my thoughts is this really helpful what you are doing? Uh, <laughs> um, so I would would watch my thoughts, um, but not say they are an enemy because I need my thoughts as I need my body, and my body goes to sleep, and my thoughts are like to go to sleep for some hours. Right. And uh, I would right. ask you if this is something you can agree. Um. How did you come to that conclusion? Were you thinking or that your thoughts? Mm. Well, that was it, was it, was, was it the thought form when you came to that conclusion or how did you come to that? I think it's more <clears throat> a feeling that a part of me is something like an enemy and I <laughs> live like this. Okay. Yeah. So it wasn't like your mind in a form of thoughts came to you and told you, what do you mean that thoughts are your enemy? Your thoughts are not your enemy. You need them as you need your body. It didn't came in that form? Yeah, it's yeah, like this. So sometimes I need my thoughts when I make some conversation. I'm very happy that I have these thoughts. <laughs> but, uh, I can deal with them. Right. Uh, and yeah. of course, uh, sometimes uh, they are uh, not very helpful. Right. Right. Okay. So what I'm referring to, I'm very glad you brought you brought this up, and and. Uh, you, we did talk earlier before the Academy started it and I did encourage you to bring it up during the Academy so everybody else can uh, benefit from it. So the working mind, there is no problem with the working mind and we all need it. So I need my working mind to, if I'm to go on a tour or I'm going to come to Germany, uh, I need to use my working mind to search for buying a flight ticket, figure out the hours, when do I go, when do I come back, uh, 